What's going on you lot? What are you all saying? So you know me, I usually make videos giving you like advice, tips and that for filmmaking. And when I do that, I usually use this setup, like this setup here, what you're looking at. Me sat on the right hand side of frame, your screen involved, practical light in there. I thought, why don't I just show you the behind the scenes of this setup? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you off of that thing and then show you each individual light and explain what they do to this scene. But hold your horses, before we take you off the tripod and that and show you about, um, how many lighting sources do you reckon are in this scene? Cause I reckon you might get it wrong, you know? Boom, there you go people, this is the setup. So as you can see, the camera usually sits on the tripod here and shoots this way. I personally like to shoot down the line of the table because it kind of creates a bit of depth. Because if you shoot like against the flat wall, it just looks very, very flat. How cool is my uh, ram's head, by the way? It's not real for those of you that probably won't like it, but yeah, it's cool, right? Anyway, back to the setup. So as you can see, I've tried to block out this window here. So we have absolutely no light coming in and affecting the scene because you want to have your scene completely black, I've even blacked out the window at the back, so that you have a completely blank canvas to start with when you are doing your lighting setup. So first things first, and that is your key light. Now my key light in this instance is this light here. A key light is the light that is lighting you the most, the one that's giving you the most exposure. So right now, this light here is acting as my key light. So essentially that's the main light, right? I'm trying to get the key light as close to me as I possibly can, because the closer it is, the larger the surface is. The larger the source, the softer it's gonna be. So the key light itself, and by the way, people, I do not recommend getting this light because the last one that I had blew up nearly in my face and potentially could have blinded me forever. So I don't recommend getting this light. Get yourself a new LED or something that isn't actually a halogen tungsten bulb because they, they can blow up. This is a super old, oh, there we go. This is a super old redhead lamp and I do not recommend getting them, but it does the job. I've had it for years and it is probably some of the cheapest lights you can find on the internet. So I've got the redhead lamp. It's at about a third of its power and I'm shooting into this half color temperature blue gel. That essentially brings the light a little bit colder because I want to create a little bit of color contrast in my scene. So I get a little bit more daylight coming onto my face than tungsten. This here is a diffuser softening that light. So let me show you here. Let me take the diffuser off and you can see what it does to my face. Mmm, pretty horrible, right? And really hard. Bring that in. Ah, oh, it's nice and soft. It kind of gives the scene a nice soft look and it's not too hard and harsh on the eyes. So next we've got the backlight and I think that the backlight is one of the most important lights in your scene. So the backlight is essentially what's giving me this nice rim over here. It's separating me from the background. And I like to have my backlight nice and warm. So as you can see behind me, the backlight is a nice warm color temperature. But old your horses, there's a cheeky little catch on this one. I'm pretending that that practical bulb light there is acting as my backlight. That's my backlight. That backlight is coming from that source over there, but I'm pretending that it's coming from this practical light just here. So that practical light just gives a bit of atmosphere to the scene. It doesn't really actually light me at all. So the actual light is coming from that backlight over there. That is really separating me from the background by giving this bit of edge light on my head, on my nose, and over my shoulder. But you know, you've got to play about with these practical lights and make it a little bit funky. So the backlight itself is just a 10 pound Ikea lamp. We don't need to go fancy. I'm not a fancy geezer, so I like to keep it cheap and cheerful, basically. This uh, practical light just basically makes the scene look a little bit better. And um, as you can see, it's tied onto the end of a tripod leg that's going up the top of there. So yeah, it ain't that fancy and it ain't that great, let's be honest. And then yeah, I've got my artificial fern over here, which I think just adds to the scene, gives it a little bit of green. Create that my sister made me out of concrete, nice gal. Sometimes I like to add a bit of foil here so that my backlight reflects some light up onto this tree to give it a little bit of depth and a little bit of character. But this time around I didn't really want to, so I didn't stick it there, but sometimes I do that. 
The next light that's in this scene is, believe it or not, another practical. And that is my computer screen. Now my computer screen is a practical because it's a practical light in the image, but if I turn it off, look what it does to this side of my face. See? And all that does is it fills in a little bit of this darkness on my face so that the contrast isn't too heavy. Another practical light is this blue light, which is an LED, on the back of my monitor. That just gives it a little bit of character. We have a bit of color contrast between the blue and the orange, and it just creates a little bit of atmosphere and a little bit of color contrast, which I love. And yeah, if you don't know what this tin foil was doing, um, it was essentially cutting out the spill that was spilling over from that lamp and going on the roof up there. So if you watch, when I put this bit of foil over the top, you'll see on the roof, Ah, it stops that bit of fill. So that is what the tin foil is for. Super high end, super expensive tin foil. And if you didn't know, my seat is pretty butters. It's not the nicest seat in the world, let's be honest. But I just needed something without a back so you can't see what I'm actually sitting on and you just see me. Um, it is in fact my granddad's old painting steps. It does the job. That's what we're here to do. We're here to do the job. It's sweet. Oh, last thing people, the mic. Now, as you can see, I've just got a light stand and you always want to have your light stand legs pointing towards the subject so that the light can either fall that way or that way and doesn't fall directly onto your subject. Anyway, I've got a light stand and I've got one of these little clamps, which I got from Amazon. They're like super damn cheap, like 10 pound or something. Clamping the boom pole. Now let me be honest with you people, this isn't a real boom pole. This is the leg off of a broken tripod. And it's one that I stole from school back in the day. So no judging, it's back in the day, I took it from school, I forgot to give it back, that's all that happened. Anyway, the leg snapped off and um, yeah, now it's my boom pole. I record into my Rode VideoMic Pro and then the cable comes all the way up here, down there, and then into the side of the camera which sits here. I've got audio directly into camera so I don't have to record a separate audio track. But you might have noticed that I've Velcroed a H1, a Zoom H1 onto the boom pole so that I can record a separate audio track just in case something dodgy happens to this one. So I've always got a backup. But I would like to add to this setup. I would like to incorporate something new, a couple of different lights. One thing I would like is a grid on top of here to stop all of the spill coming out from my key light just so it stays on the subject. And I'd also like a few more practical lights up here on this section because it might just give the image a little bit more atmosphere, a little bit more depth. Boom, so there you go people, that is my lighting setup. One thing I'm gonna do now is individually put on all of these lights to show you just how the scene kind of paints itself. All right? Boom. There we are people, we are officially lit.